Hello? Hello, hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Can you hear us? Hi. Yes. Yeah. Hi, hello. Uh, well, I, I want to thank you for uh, talking to us. Uh, we really appreciate it. We uh, we've seen a few of your few of your things, but we just watched Patalok. Uh, okay. And we thought you were fantastic uh, in that. So obviously, we'll be Thanks. talking uh, more about that. Uh, Rick is very attached to Bengal, so he'll also have uh, questions for you about <laughs> that. Uh, <laughs> so I want to thank you for how, talking. So how are you? How are you? Uh... Uh, attached to Bengal, how are you? Uh, the love of my life lives in Calcutta. She's Bengali. Oh, um, yes. Her name is, her name is Andrani Mukherjee, and okay. I've been to Calcutta now several times um, because she's there, and she specifically wanted me to tell you that she's really excited that I'm talking to you, and she oh, you. very well knows who you are and loves you. <laughs> Please convey my love and regards to her. I mean, it's really exciting to know that a part of you stays in my hometown. Yes, absolutely. My heart is there. Well, on, Thank on, you. on starting with that, uh, what do you what do you think the biggest differences are between since you've done both industries, the Bengali industry and and and, and, and I guess the Hindi industry, uh, Bollywood? Yes. So I think this is one question that um, you know, people tend to ask me because I'm, you know, I'm working and shuttling between two industries. I don't really think there is too much of a difference um, other than maybe the work culture mm -hmm. uh, on, on a very basic level. I mean, it's the format is same. Uh, I would just say that, you know, people have this notion that Bollywood is always about more budget Mm. You know more money, uh, but I, in reality, I think uh, that's a very cliched idea we have in our head regarding Bollywood, mm -hmm. and uh, independent films also happen in Bollywood, but they just don't fall into the quote-unquote Bollywood um, yeah. criteria, and you know the Bollywood, the way people look at Bollywood, because mm -hmm. Bollywood seems like just the biggies and you know big films and big money and big mm. schedule but uh, very interesting smaller films are also happening now i am perpetually confused as to call them hindi films or indie films or bollywood films because yeah. uh, yep. moment you go to bombay to do anything people think you're doing bollywood yeah but right you want to they also don't want to uh, you know include the smaller films as a part of bollywood so it it's very it's a very confusing situation mm. uh so i i i think uh when i was working extensively in kolkata it has been almost 20 years that i mm. am working in the film industry mm -hmm. so people all think oh you're going to bombay a lot of money big films but i have done very interesting smaller films also mm -hmm. so I I just uh, think the difference between Bengal and Bombay, I don't want to use the word Bollywood, yeah. uh, but the only difference I think is um, in Bombay, actors are given more respect. Hmm. Mm. It, it's not about the money and it's not about the budget. They just take a lot of care of the actors um, small actors, big actors, junior artists, you know, who people will not even notice them. They're maybe standing, you know, in a crowd. But mm -hmm. if somebody is pulling a chair for me, I have seen people pulling a chair for them as well. The people mm -hmm. who will be standing in the crowd. Mm -hmm. So that, that I think is a very, very big difference because they really take care of the actors. And... Because I personally feel, and I mean, you can just disagree with me if you think uh, I'm, my feelings are not right, that, um, you know, if you have a fantastic script, you have a fantastic, uh, you know, DOP and fantastic locations and superlative budget, if your actors are failing, your film will fail. Oh, 100%. 
We agree. Yeah, because no, nobody is going to come out of a, a movie hall saying that the actors were pathetic, but we really like the scenery and we really <laughs> like the camera work. But on the contrary, many a times we have heard that, you know, the script was weak, but the we were bl we are blown by the performance. Mm -hmm. Yes. So at the end of the day, your actors are the heart and soul of your film. And it's very important that they are taken care of. And, you know, nobody is asking that, uh, you know, we'll reach the set at eight o'clock in the morning and we need a salmon buffet. <laughs> right. Just need uh, some exotic drink to quench our thirst. <laughs> the need is very basic. And I think Bombay, the usual uh, attitude and eagerness uh, in the in the entire unit is there to take care of the artists in what whatever means and whichever way they can you know smaller budget films also provide that that care and bigger films of course bigger budget films can afford to provide that care but that care is there which unfortunately i really don't see happening in an industry where i have worked like really really long so mm. i think that is that a basic difference but it makes a lot of it makes a lot of difference and there's no yes. there's no union right like sag in in india the screen actors uh, guild yeah we have oh you do there are uh, there are there are federations and guilds in bombay which is the main guild and then uh, the regional industries also have their okay. guild and federation cool so yeah that all all of that is there but you really can't call call the federation or the guild you know if you're not being provided a chair or a water bottle mm. or toilet and it's it's just not possible gotcha. because gotcha. the guild is in bombay or Kata. you're shooting in the hills or in a desert you can't really get people on on calls and make sure that you know you're taken care of yeah mm. so um, I just feel that that basic difference is there, but it makes a. It, I think it's a big thing, you know, for actors. Yeah, absolutely. Now we have a lot of questions specifically about your portrayal of Dolly that we'll get to in a second. I, I particularly, and uh, but first and foremost, we don't know how you got involved with Pataloka. We'd love to know how did the project come to your attention and you get involved. Uh, so uh, I had got a call from the cast casting agency uh, from Abhishek Banerjee mm -hmm. uh, who has played Hathora Tyagi yep. with, yep. the, with the hammer yeah so he had called me and uh, he had narrated me the uh, the story and uh, provided um, a basic script which they were still working on and uh, I was in Kolkata that time and I had sent uh, the audition tape I, I asked a friend of mine, a very close friend of mine, to shoot the audition tape for me. And uh, luckily, my friend has a GSD at his house. He has a Alsatian dog. And um, uh, the dog is quite fond of me. I also love him very much. And so we just, when we were shooting the scene for the audition tape, we tried to keep the dog, you know, behind the doors, closed in a room. but. Uh, he was restless and he was howling and he wanted to come out. So after 15-20 minutes of miserable tries to get the audition tape done without him, uh, we failed. And uh, so I just told my friend that, you know, let it be. Just let T2 Use it. <laughs> be, in the, be in the scene and be in the tape. Because yeah, the scene also yeah. involved, uh, involved dog and mm -hmm. uh, involved a dog. And I was like, let him be because he's screaming and he's unhappy and kind of, you know, it's it's just meddling with my head and I don't want my performance to suffer because of because Tito is unhappy and locked up in a room. So I sent the audition tape along with, uh, with the dog and uh, then I got a call from Abhishek saying, when can I come down to Bombay because the director and the DOP, they wanted to meet and, you know, take few more shoot a uh, few more parts and uh, do the look test etc you know that process started mm -hmm. yeah. so when i when i got on board i called up my friend and said that 
I think it has only happened for T2 and not because you shot the tape. <laughs> so, I had no and that is how I I I was very excited actually because I am an avid dog lover. Mm-hmm. I have uh, I forever in my life I I think we have dog we've kept dogs we've had dogs since I was in class 6 and uh, we oh, barring the first dog of mine I think rest all of them were rescued mm-hmm. or adopted and uh, the one that lives with me now is also a stray mm-hmm. like shabitri mm-hmm. uh, you know i just i think i just didn't need to act mm-hmm. you know it just it just came so naturally to me and uh, i had just suggested uh, to my scriptwriter and director that just let me communicate with her in my mother tongue because you know i was just feeling that if i the dialogues were writ- there the all the dialogues with the dog and the communication was written in hindi or english but i was just not feeling it you know like coming calling her uh, hi baby come and eat or you know hi baby have your lunch you know i was just not feeling it mm-hmm. so yeah. i i just i just suggested that if i can communicate with the dog in my mother tongue because then i would just talk to her the way i talk to my pets mm-hmm. you know i just to right. mug up and send and somehow i feel because i've i've had dogs since i was a child they understand that language of love and care uh-huh. i think it's just the tone that is important and not not what you are talking 100% I've, and um, you know i just feel that it 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 made the shooting process easier mm-hmm. because she kind of uh, let me be with her and you know cuddle her and pick her up and you know and she was pregnant and the dog that we shot with in patal lok she was actually pregnant oh. so we had a lot of care uh, yeah. everybody in the unit loved dogs so which was a blessing mm-hmm. and uh, people were not rushing with her we took our time uh, so you know i could really give her that warmth and that care uh, during the entire shooting process mm-hmm. and i kind of think you know it really really worked yeah because people have loved my bond with shabitri mm. i mean i really did not think uh, they would love it so much mm-hmm. <laughs> but somehow uh, the char- both i mean the character and sh- i think shabitri became more famous than everybody else in patal <laughs> in india i have got the stature of the national stray dog mom now people just act <laughs> with me with that i think which is amazing and uh, i loved it the most i mean of all the characters and of all the work i have done in my life uh, this getting um, appreciation and so much love from the audience and every time they are taking my name they are taking shabitri's name as well Mm-hmm. So it's not Dolly Mehra alone. It's Dolly and Shabitri. <laughs> Me being a dog parent, I think it's a, it's an ecstatic feeling. That's fantastic. Sure. That's fantastic. Uh, one uh, on that same uh, with the patal patal lock. I'm sorry if I'm saying it incorrectly. I mispronounce everything. Um, the one of our favorite. parts of the even though obviously everybody in the entire series has been fantastic we got to talk to Jadeep and and Abhishek as well um mm. but everybody in the, it was so fantastic but you and Niraj uh your scenes together were so powerful um especially when um he came home uh, after you found out and you were trying to um basically love on him right um that entire thing we wanted to know how much of it was scripted and how much of it was improvised because it just seemed with two basically thespians acting it just seemed very natural and almost like improvised and so i want to know what the what was behind that uh so i think uh during the start of the scene where we see that the woman is checking out her body 
yes. kind of seeing that um, her, you know, her her face is not really tight and mm-hmm. very young, and you know, her breasts are sagging, mm. and you know, she's tummy. She has a heavy butt. So the things that happens to women when they get old and also they don't they stop taking care of their body as much as a 25 year old would do Mm -hmm. so those bits were improvised they were Mm -hmm. not um, as uh, written in such details Mm -hmm. Uh, I uh, we were discussing the scene and I added uh, whatever you know I felt that being a woman myself of that age and you know the way a woman is insecured the first thing that comes to our mind is maybe you know my body is not that right and that's Mm. why my husband my partner or my boyfriend is straying towards whoever else somebody else because maybe you know i don't i am not attractive enough anymore Mm. that's the first so as a woman i think that was the first thing that hit me Mm. and I, you know, we were discussing and I said that, you know, I can, I can use my body and uh, that's the best way to show vulnerability and insecurity. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was not scripted. And, um, and then of course, once Neeraj walks in, uh, I don't know, I, I just, you know, the, the, the bad feeling and the ignorance kind of, I think just really struck me hard. Because if a, if if a, if his wife was crying so much that you know her face was swollen and there was water dropping from her nose and mouth and that entire shit stage she was drinking also, so we see that the husband walks inside the room. Mm-hmm. He doesn't actually notice mm-hmm. that the wife is in such a miserable state, and uh, so we you know we kind of just went with the flow and uh, the initial one or two take wasn't right because uh, Neeraj was little more participating Mm. and director was like you you can't be participating Mm. even if you are kissing each other like in a very um, what do I say like a consumed manner Mm -hmm. Uh, but he is the one who wants to consume you and you are not an active participant Mm -hmm. so one or two takes you know I mean it was not things were just not happening the way it it was supposed to happen Neeraj um, uh, participated a little more in the second take I think I was not clinging to him as much as I should have Mm -hmm. and then kind of it, it kind of started I really didn't know that at what point I am going to start crying or you know all mm-hmm. those were not really calculated in my head in so much detail yeah and the more we went into the scene and uh, we were shooting in the middle of the night it was very very cold in Delhi I think it was two degrees or so uh, around that time mm. when we were shooting Pata Lok and the entire day's exhaustion was also there and uh, I just kept feeling miserable and more miserable and more miserable and somehow all of that just started working in my head Mm. Mm. so I think one thing led to another but also uh, just at the end of the scene where uh, Neeraj puts me to sleep and you know he goes and sits on the side of the bed and the phone call comes and Dolly kind of in a very mumbling, uh, you know, way, just says this in her mother tongue that I have, is, is that the girl who is calling you? I have forgotten her name. Mm-hmm. She says that, that it, is it she who is calling you? I have forgotten her name. So I think that bit of, I have forgotten her name was not there mm. yeah I have only you know mumbled it like that in, in Bengali that what is the name of the girl I can't remember or I've forgotten the name of the girl is it the same one who is calling you because 
she kind of connects that she has met her, met her during the award mm-hmm. function and there was this peculiar awkwardness between the husband and the girl and mm-hmm. dolly is not stupid mm-hmm. i think she she just uh, she didn't let she didn't want to dignify uh, dignify this entire extramarital affair with a response mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. she was i think she was too proud to confront with her husband and go through that same you know walk on the same shitty track of why are you sleeping with so and so why are you thing mm-hmm. on me the usual monotonous things that we keep seeing happening in films and we assume that the same kind of things ha- must be happening in real lives mm-hmm. but i I feel you know people as a woman i think it's time that we handle such situations with grace mm-hmm. and maintain our dignity and uh, you know embrace ourselves and try to understand that uh we have to feel that we are enough for ourselves and not kind of completely depend on our partners and think that our entire existence is happening because of them and how right. they uh pass uh also i think for dolly it was important that um neeraj's or sanjeev mehra's this entire not giving dolly attention mm-hmm. at all mm-hmm. to kind of cope up with that mm-hmm. and you know try try to figure out a way where she did not need sanjeev to give her attention mm-hmm. that can only yeah. have thing that i am enough for myself yes yes yeah there we all I'm these actually, things were ahead, no, just were on going on in my in my mind that also after that scene whatever happens that how can she maintain her dignity and grace and also disassociate herself from this my husband is not giving me attention i have given my life to him i have done so so much for him why is he behaving like this with me why is he treating me like trash i think that needed to stop for her and mm-hmm. you know she really needed to accept herself that she can she can be enough for herself and i think all all that mixed feelings were there in my mind and i was very angry also on sanjeev not <laughs> and <laughs> that kind of i think um, got us there it was a very sad scene i was very um, i was very miserable after we finished shooting the entire scene which happened for a very long time mm. because of the various angles and the cuts and the retakes i was like very very exhausted i mean i I'm actually sure. didn't when they were changing when they were changing the angles and you know the lights and this and that i actually didn't get up from the bed i was just i had just thrown myself on the bed and i was lying there until and unless we were ready for the next take so i actually didn't get up and go to some other room and you know have a cup of tea or coffee i was like i don't want to get out of this head space Mm-mm. and don't want to move my move my body from here i'll just be here and be in the space because i just don't want to switch on and off and you know flip to some other mood Sure. I don't want to talk to anybody. I just wanted to be be there and Neeraj was very very supportive and he's a superb co-actor so <laughs> Well that that scene I've actually I've watched the whole series twice actually. Uh, okay. Corbin and I we watched it together and then I actually watched it with Indrani my love in Calcutta. And I was waiting for that moment to come up because for me and I'm not just saying this because you're here for me the as an actor my favorite acting moment in the show is that scene especially from the beginning point and i you already answered the question i was going to ask you about whether or not the lifting of the breasts as she looked in the mirror was scripted or you did that and and it touched on a number of things first of all i found that to be a tremendously courageous moment for you as an actor to be that transparent because i could see I I said to Indrani after the scene I paused it and I said that is an actress right there 
who's unafraid to be completely naked in front of the world. And that is what the world needs, is more actors who are willing to share all of themselves. And it, it spoke to also this other thing I'd like to ask you about, because our first exposure to you as an actor was in the role you played in uh, Byom Kesh Bakshi, where yeah. you're the femme fatale, you know, sex symbol, yeah. which has been a lot of your career has been the beautiful woman. And I found it, as did Indrani, to be so empowering to watch an actress who's known for having been that kind of character totally transformed into a, a woman looking at herself in the mirror. And how important is that for you? Not just personally, but we have the problem here in, in America with actresses who won't be respected or seen as they age. They wanna be kept in this 20 something sex symbol role. And I found your portrayal of Dolly to obliterate those stereotypes. Is that is that important for you as an actor? Uh, see, I, I, I have tried to shape my career very differently mm -hmm. and kind of you know reinvent myself every time I was doing a film mm -hmm. uh, language was not important uh, I have also done a Marathi film uh, last year which is streaming on Amazon Prime right now so I, I always thought that the moment you do a certain kind of film which clicks at the box office audience also kind of you know places you that way right. and you tend to get uh, similar roles mm -hmm. uh, you know like if if people if if i have in in a film if uh, i have portrayed a very bold character and maybe you know i have kissed seven men so the next films or offers that i will get people will just fill those scripts with intimate scenes because they kind of think that okay so she is uninhibited and she she doesn't have a problem doing intimate scenes so it's fine because we will not get three more you know um, actresses to do that hmm. so i have tried uh, you know to not fall into that um, quota of she is a she is a you know symbol of hotness and she has to do um, extremely glamorous roles all the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we want to see her like that. So I think over the years, I would say 2010, 11 onwards, I have played uh, alcoholic. Uh, for one Bengali film, I had actually shaved my head. And, um, yeah, I had shaved my head. I actually um, didn't... Uh, wax my body for almost two months mm -hmm. because I just wanted to wanted the hair to be there because if I am a woman who is under substance abuse and my family is constantly picking me up from the streets because I'm so intoxicated I am not supposed to go to the parlor and get myself waxed that's right but these are the things I think that an actor has to bring on board yes. because all the time, everything the directors can't spoon feed you with. Mm -hmm. Why? Why would I expect uh, a director to come and tell me that I want to cast you because without you, this film can't happen? Because they they expect me to bring things on board and not just mug up lines that are provided to me and you know go in front of the camera and just blurt it out and there I'm done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I take my check and go back home. I'm sleeping well. Right. I I do think uh, as an as an actor, I have a responsibility to reinvent myself, also to present myself in very different ways that will also you know make the audience want to watch my work. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I have I have done actually a lot of a uh, lot of crazy roles. I keep experimenting with my look and the kind of characters I play. So last year uh, in September, the film was supposed to be released this April, but of course, because of the pandemic, it couldn't. Uh -huh. I, I've played the character of a Marwari, lower middle class saleswoman, uh, who is in her mid fifties. Mm. So, you know, people can't, people don't think, uh, at the first go that they can see me with salt and pepper hair 
with lot of freckles on my face uh, you know showing the stretch marks on my tummy wearing a seedha pallu sari and walking in a very sloppish way mm-hmm. they you know they're going to see me in super sexy blouses and saris mm-hmm. and walking with the toes right that people think uh, that you know they they want to see me but it's also my job and res- responsibility to show them everything that i want to do uh-huh. and so i want to grow as an actor i want to explore different characters i i want to you know develop myself so the only weapon i have is to play as much as much uh, varied characters as i can mm-hmm. so i can't stick to one format that you know i'll only play characters who are early 30s right no no child definitely i can't have children because that will make me feel old look old mm-hmm. i will only work with these set of heroes because they will make me feel young mm. so i i think you know um if somebody follows world cinema and so much of work is available on ott platforms now and i really get so influenced by seeing how people are you know they really don't think of how they are looking how their bodies are you know how they just they just show their so much of their real self in front of the camera and that's why we remember those characters that they are etched in our mind forever if you're playing a character where you are supposed to look bad then you have to look bad i mean just because you're a heroine you can't be looking good all the time mm-hmm. so you know i i i think when i when i actually wanted to you know really lift up my breasts and leave them so that you know the camera catches the fact that my breasts are not the way it should have been if i was a if i was in my 20s so when i suggested that i want to do that um the director and the the show runner you know they they were like they swallowed uh, for mm. a second they kind of told mm. their i could see the lump in their throat and they were like uh, you want to do that so i said yeah i mean what is the big deal let's yeah. go ahead so then they were like so we will just empty the room and you know ask all the extra technicians to go i said there is no need to do all that i mean no i don't think anybody in the unit expects me to have perky breasts like i'm 20 <laughs> like I mean, really let's come on let's just yeah. do this yeah exactly exactly so then <laughs> uh so you know after that shot is over when you finally meet uh, neeraj so we can we can we can cut there and you can wear your inners and we you know we can uh, get along with the scene from there i said but then people will understand if you are holding me so tight like a mid shot people will understand that just now this woman was crying because of her problems in her body and then in the next shot we see that she is just form and proper i said please don't worry about me i i don't want to i mean i said it's not even a headache now because you're asking me you know i'm thinking twice right so i don't want to think twice and let's just you know get going with it but yeah i think you know people are more conscious and cautious in india because we have a certain notion of culture mm-hmm. social who's the way people look at you uh you know it's just the indian kind of concept actresses can't do this actresses can't right. do that actors are not supposed to behave like this they cannot show this they cannot show that so in, in the indian premises there is a lot of issues that um actresses need to keep in mind to save themselves from you know being attacked because they have done a certain kind of role mm-hmm. uh, i i at times feel that i should i should be more cautious but i don't know it just doesn't come to me naturally so my parents used to get very stirred that uh, you you can't just do something 
some some films which doesn't get a a certificate from the censor board you know you can you can just do some roles which are normal I, so, I, so i think this is normal because our lives are not uh, you know not so hunky dory and the kind of films we want to watch as entertainment are mm-hmm. real life are not like that so i would not want to portray anything like like that in the film which is so far away from the reality of the society and is so you know so different and regressive just because i have to cater to a certain indian mindset yeah mm-hmm. so yeah problems are there but i don't know it just doesn't really occur to me that i need to follow follow all that so yeah that's great i'm, I'm very good I'm very cool <laughs> good it's <laughs> fantastic we love that um I did, we've talked to, a few, I think Abhishek said this, and I've heard a few Indian artists, I think we watched an interview with Ranveer, where he said this, where India in the past, I don't know, five years or ten years or so, uh, since OTT platforms have came about, it's basically a new wave of Indian cinema, a more realistic, uh, which uh, we've seen with, uh, we watch Sacred Games, uh, on Netflix and all the content Amazon's putting out. Do you see that change in Indian cinema to more yeah. realism? Yeah. Yes. Uh, more realism, more natural mm-hmm. uh, way of depicting uh, stories. Uh, the storytelling pattern has changed because of OTT platforms, because directors and producers can experiment with a lot of concepts and ideas. Um, huge crores of budget is not required Re- even right. if it is required right. i think it doesn't depend on the theatrical release that actually how many number of people will go to the theaters to watch this uh-huh. right. you know, pe- i think if right. patalo was a film or a two and a half hour film people would have really thought whether to make it or not mm-hmm uh-huh. I am not sure how many, how, which part of the audience would have loved to go and watch it in the theaters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think OTT platforms are giving that space to actors, producers, actors, uh, directors, you know, to explore, to try out various things, and they are being applauded. Mm-hmm. People, people are really looking forward to see. um as real as possible stuff on ott platforms mm-hmm. you know not the usual masala mm-hmm. you know the same equation kind of films that uh, happened uh, maybe 2 3 years back mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah it's a, yeah. it's a huge change and a very big opportunity for everybody in the film industry also mm-hmm. it's open up it's opening up doors and windows to a lot of character artists who would not get their place uh, in a film uh-huh. yes uh, like you know uh, a series like patal lok has over 200 cast mhm uh-huh. mhm so you can cast 200 solid actors how much of them would get a space in a mm-hmm. in a film good point in a in a 2 hour pl- in a 2 hour film mm-hmm. yeah just mostly on the heroes yep for a ensemble cast of say five or six people uh, how may, how may, how many actors can you place there but in a series you're 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 opening up doors to 200 actors who must be struggling for the last 5 10 years and not getting an opportunity you know to really do some good work yeah mm-hmm. absolutely when when pata lok as an audience i loved everybody oh, i mean even auto rickshaw driver even the journalist in uh, in that punjab area mm-hmm. uh, sm- smallest of smallest characters i thought they they were they were meant to, to do that and they were they were that only yes the inspector manju she is a casting director from the casting agency that uh, you know that worked on patal lok so i really when i when i saw her i thought that she is the inspector mm-hmm. where would he where would she get a chance 
performance to deliver such a performance if we were only sticking to uh, films that will release in movie theaters yeah yes so i think it's a huge opportunity to for everybody Mm-hmm. Absolutely is. And I know that you've been uh, early on in your career the majority of what you began to do was in soap work in in Bengal. Uh yes. how did how did you get started as an actress? I don't think we know the exact origin of how you became an actor. Uh so uh I was uh I was studying uh in Jadavpur University. I was doing my honors course and uh, uh, a friend of ours um, his father was a director. and uh, they were starting a new te- television series and they wanted to cast somebody new and fresh and so you know my friend got introduced me to his father and um, i was very reluctant and i was not interested okay. so i you know i really wanted to focus on studies i was a very good student i wanted to uh, you know just pursue to uh, academics and um, so i just uh, i just saw that my friend's father who was a very very renowned director of bengal um he he started coming to the university every day trying to convince me so that i say yes <laughs> and uh, so i started you know giving them a lot of terms and conditions that i will only be able to work in the first half or the second half because i can't miss my entire college Uh, mm. classes uh then i said that i will only i will take so this much amount of money for my per day remuneration so i thought that they are just going to say no to everything on the contrary they were they said yes to everything <laughs> and then i didn't know <laughs> and i didn't take i was i, I didn't even take uh, you know take it so seriously when i started working i thought that you know it's fine i'll get some pocket money you know i'll just i don't need to ask for money from my mom and i can take care of my own, own expenses and i can go for shopping and all that so i was just taking it very lightly until and unless i saw that uh, the reviews that were coming out uh in the media about that specific television series which was a blockbuster um as far as the commercial commercials went it was a super hit show on tv but uh the reviews were slamming me left right and center when <laughs> they have written all bad things and i mean the worst that can be written for an artist they had written all that and that when it's that was when it struck me that you know the i i need to do this seriously or i <laughs> should not do it every month i am opening a newspaper because social media and internet and all that was not there that time so i'm like opening a newspaper in my house and i just see there are 10 lines dedicated to me thrashing me left right and center <laughs> so i know that decided that man this is the serious business and i need to you know uh need to be need to do it right and i need to learn things and my father uh, is a was a very very renowned artist he was in the industry for almost 50 years so then i used to go back home and learn from him various techniques and you know how to how to um emote and how to cry um you know how just how to behave because i my father always told me one thing very very fiercely that as an actor it is not your job to act you just have to behave like the character mm-hmm. so do you need words. to act and think in i have to act you just yeah. have to place yourself as the character in that situation under those circumstances and behave the way the character should behave so i you know i started taking tips from him i used to get you know get flustered when i thought that okay somebody my director is going to tell me action and i'm supposed to start crying how is it possible for a human to do that <laughs> i mean and i i used to think the most horrible things that can happen in my life the most horrible things that has happened in my life and still i saw that my eyes were like dry as a desert 
and i'm like <laughs> how am i supposed to do this but then with you know with every every work that i um that i got involved in i just started practicing mm-hmm. and uh, trying to use the techniques that we are supposed to uh use at various points and um chose to do a lot of diff- difficult characters when i moved from television to films mm-hmm. and i had started uh i had started mm-hmm. with hardcore commercial films you know the dancing around trees commercial film as we see in it cinema mm. so i started with those kind of films and then i moved towards the more sensible cinema so it's been a very very long journey but i just keep trying to learn and uh, i think as an actor it's very important to surrender yourself totally to the character yeah you can't really think oh i can't you know i can't um i can't look bad i can't look ugly my my i my you know my physicality has to be on point perfect you just have to forget all of that and switch off yes. Yes. and just be be yourself as the character whichever character you are playing mm-hmm. that is how you know the audience can connect with you mm-hmm. so you you are not supposed to be at your best all the time in front of the camera mhm uh, because I, i i don't think as an actor we can really cheat the camera i mean the camera captures everything Uncorrect. correct every every yep. muscle emotion the the little bit of glistening in your eyes yeah you know everything uh, is important so if you're playing a character where you where, where the defects in your body need to be shown you show it uh-huh. yes. where if you're playing a character where you need to look hot and sexy you do that you get ready for that role that way uh-huh. uh, so when when i when i came on board for detective bonkesh bakshi i was confirmed for the character for the role uh, on 31st december 2013 and we started shooting for the film around mid january 2014 hmm. and uh, dibakar had told me the director dibakar banerji that i need to lose weight because you know then in 2014 15 also bollywood hmm. was very specific about thin bodies hmm. you know you need to look a, in a specific way so i said okay fine you give me 2 weeks time i'll do the need for it so i went to a dietitian i started doing rigorous gym i had lost 7 kilos in 10 days wow yeah and and i maintained that uh, you know that body weight and the entire process i maintained it for 4 months till april till we finished the shoot wow so my point is if you have to do that because you right. have to look in a certain way mm-hmm. you do that right and if you have to look in a certain way like the way dolly mera looks you have to do that too mm-hmm. in some other role you know if you're if you're supposed to have dark circles under your eyes you have to show that you have dark circles i mean why the hell will i use foundation to you know for for people to see that you know i'm like Oh, so perfect! My face is just super right. fine. Mm-hmm. Right. So I think uh, um, actors who who really want to excel in their craft, and it's 2020, where at the click of a button, people can see work that's happening all across the world. Mm-hmm. Yes. I I am a huge fan of Norwegian shows, mm-hmm. and I I watch. everything that's happening uh, in that part of the world and i've seen detectives in actors playing detectives who are plus size you know their 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 yeah. their hair is completely unkempt all the time nothing is set up if you if you look at them you really feel that 
they have a family to take care of they are single parents they are you know they are struggling to reach their uh, kids to school and then they are going to work there's no lipstick there's no mascara their hair is like just in a rubbish state Mm-hmm. they are not uh, they are, they are plus size people they are like tucking their uh, shirts over their tummy and they are running to the police stations to do their work and like i am a fan of that yeah yes i don't want to see an actor in stilettos wearing lacy bras and you know dropping their kids at school with tiffin boxes water bottles at hand because it's just so unbelievable mm-hmm. correct yep i i cannot even <clears throat> relate to the so now when you know there are tons of ott platforms and people can see whatever is ha- happening all over the world as an actor from india i also have to compete with that level mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. looking pretty is not a criteria at all looking the way the character should look look is my o- only concern <laughs> I enjoyed that. Um I the I want to ask you uh before we finish um the first thing we saw you in was detective how do you say it I'm sorry detective I I always Gomkish thank you. Gomkish <laughs> I always butcher that name. Um and you were working <laughs> with but you, know, is, but you know he is a he is a Bengali. Yeah. Oh so, yeah. So in bengali we pronounce the name very differently mm-hmm. but, but when we when the hindi audience pronounces it it becomes very different and bengalis get very angry with that <laughs> it's it's is it yeah in, in hindi they would say byamkesh bakshi but yeah. in bengali bengal- it would be byamkesh bakshi yes yes <laughs> yes <laughs> you are le- being taught well. your your, your, your lessons well. paid off right <laughs> <laughs> I give all the credit to Indrani. It uh, is, <laughs> but tutor well. But we, uh, we—that was the first thing we saw you in, and you were working with Sushant, and then now his last film, uh, you're also in. So I just wanted to ask you, how was it working with Sushant uh, for multiple times, uh, and just your experience working with him? Uh, yes, so uh, it's actually quite. It's, it's saddening to even you know talk mm-hmm. and discuss yeah. about him and uh, i think um, i'm the only actor who has worked in two films with him mm-hmm. so i and i just realized that after uh, he's gone that i i i'm the only one who has worked with him in two films so uh, when we did detective bomkesh bakshi together that was his third film mm-hmm. so he did kai poche should desi romance and he did detective bomkesh rakshi so uh, uh what i really saw in him was this hunger to do a lot of different roles mm-hmm. and i i you know all the conversations that we have had uh, on the sets i really didn't think he was um wanting to fall into the bollywood um uh, how to put it you know bollywood uh, makes certain kind of heroes mm-hmm. yes you know our our thoughts and our uh, mm, notions and pres- presumptions and assumptions of bollywood heroes are of a certain kind mm-hmm. them in a certain kind of films we think they are good in those certain kind of films and we don't see them experimenting too much if you are right. part of the bollywood a lister heroes yeah right i really didn't feel that sushant wanted to fall into that specific category no otherwise the kind of films that he has chosen in his very small career mm-hmm. were different from one an- another another you know he is the one who did detective bomkesh bakshi and at the very early stage of his film career which is which was quite a risk because mm-hmm. one star in the big bollywood uh you know platter you would want to play it very safe mhm right you would want 
go with the flow play very safe do projects that were a sure shot hit with the audience so he kind of the first film kai poche was not a run of the mill mm-hmm. then he did romance but then again he did detective bomkesh bakshi which was a very risky move for his career mm-hmm. you know doing do that film playing that character wearing a dhoti and a period film you would not want to risk it at such a early stage of the career mm-hmm. then dhoti which is a biopic and it makes your work so much more uh you know uh, difficult mm-hmm. the people already have a notion of of the person you are portraying mm-hmm. everybody knows the and then you know you are playing dhoni so you you really have to become the person which is again risk and way 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 more hard work he also did a film like son chidiya mhm mm-hmm. which is on you know like you're a goon you're in chambal you don't even look like a hero you're filled with mud and dust and all kinds of crap you you just never look good in a film mm-hmm. you're looking the character but you'd never look like the so called you know larger than life hero charming dashing huha mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. there then chichore completely a uh, you know 180 degree turn from all the kind all the rest of the films that he has done so you know when you when you when you converse with him apart from he was a uh, avid reader very intelligent intelligent um was never into the bollywood hulla balloo kind of you know that i need to party every day i need to mm-hmm. are every day i really never saw him uh having that kind of a mindset on the sets so i i really think as an actor he wanted to make, make a mark of his own not falling into the usual trap of doing the same thing over and over again just to you know keep his audience happy yeah he took a lot of risk uh, in choosing the kind of films that he chose to do and um mm, very hard working um very simple mm-hmm. uh, i actually didn't i worked with him in this in his initial years and then i did dil vichara just you know 2018 19 uh so i really didn't see him as a changed boss in that way mm-hmm. because name and fame really hits you very hard over here and one film after you can see a person and think that oh my god they've changed completely because mm-hmm. you know the popularity just to your mind yeah and i thought he was very grounded very warm mm-hmm. and uh, when we were shooting for dil bechara so there was this very famous dialogue of anguri devi which of course i played in detective where she said uh, तुम नहीं होते तो कुछ नहीं होता सो दिस वन डायलॉग कम्स अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम्स इन डिटेक्टिव ओमकेश बख्शी एंड वेन वी स्टार्टेड डूइंग दिल बेचारा वेन एवर आई मेट सुशांत ऑन द सेट और इन द होटल ही ऑलवेज यूज टू कम एंड टेल मी दिस यू नो विद द सेम फीलिंग एंड सेम एंड यू नो दैट हिंदी ओमकेश डायलॉग एंड आर डिरेक्टर मुकेश छाबरा यूज टू गेट सो फ्रेंटिक and he used to come running and tell sushan tum ye bangali ke you know don't talk to this bangali woman like this concentrate on the daughter she is playing the mother <laughs> <laughs> and he always used to you know play play to play this uh, thing in front of mukesh chabra who's a director and he was always like So, Sushant and Swastika, you all will not be standing beside each other. <laughs> I don't want people to have the hangover of Detective Bhumkesh Bakshi. She is yeah. the mother. She is the mother. You just concentrate on the daughter. Don't stand beside her. Don't. Why are you all just going on Separate saying? Separate you two. Detective Bhumkesh Bakshi dialogues. Why? Why do you all keep going back to the film? You know, what if the audience smells? the bumkesh bakshi thing in your life i said are mukesh like 
I'm playing the girl's mother. So technically, I'm the mother-in-law of Sushant. You chill, chill. Like nobody. <laughs> right. And oh. you know the human members to tell us that from where does Swastika? From what angle does she look like the mother? I mean, what are you all doing? I said, when the film will come out, I will look like the mother. Mm. I will make that. people just cannot see anything else other than uh, other than i'm the mother of the girl but when the camera is not working <laughs> then just um, make me like you know breathe and we used to have a uh, used to really have very uh, uh superlative uh, i think conversations also uh, we were shooting in jamshedpur so sushant carried his telescope in jamshedpur mm. which he kept uh, in his room balcony and uh, we were all invited to go and see the stars through it i think i loved, loved doing that mm-hmm. and uh, i also actually told him the day i had signed uh, dil bichara and i met him at the fox star studios uh, he had come for costume trials and everything so i told him that sushant my first bollywood big film happened with you and now my second bollywood big film uh-huh. is happening with you again uh-huh. so i think you know our stars are intertwined uh-huh. and um, very promptly you know he just uh, replied saying i just hope they are not faulty <laughs> oh so dilwechara is a is a remake of fault in yeah. our stars yeah so then obviously i told told him that stop you know stop playing this intelligent human or is you know coming up with all these um <laughs> lines and you know i was just pulling his leg but uh, yeah i mean two big films in my career in in so called bollywood yeah and uh, two of those are with him so okay. i think i'll just a lot of memories and uh, very cherished ones but it's very very unfortunate I want to thank yeah. you for talking about it. I know it, it's probably not the easiest thing to talk about right now, but we are very much looking forward to that film uh, and obviously watching just more yes. of what you do. Uh, I just so, yeah, Robin and Rick do do watch Dil Bichara. Oh, we are. Oh, we're going to the, the minute yeah. it comes out. <laughs> I would just want to finish off here uh, with a little bit of just a couple of rapid fire questions. Uh, not nothing really important. Just want to know your opinion. So the first one. would be coffee or chai chai okay favorite alcoholic beverage if you drink alcohol um yeah of course <laughs> <laughs> i like it i am not that that great a act- Just that I can act and say, "Oh, uh, no, no alcohol for me." Only alcohol. <laughs> Only alcohol. <laughs> right on. So what's um, Jim Beam? Mm. Bourbon, bourbon. Yeah. Mm. Uh, favorite Hollywood film? Uh, also Bacardi, White Rum. Yeah, Bacardi, White Rum. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Favorite Hollywood favorite? film. Favorite Hollywood film? Hollywood, yeah. Um, forever, or I think uh, Roman Holiday. Ooh. And I cry a lot. Like I cry buckets full whenever I watch it. Favorite Indian film? Any genre, in in language. Jojita, Wahi Sikandar. Mm. It's a Amir Khan film. quite old we were, we were in i think just passing out of school or early yeah i think school only has amazing songs and um, uh amir khan i think really was a school kid i don't know he just mm-hmm. looks like a school kid in that but i can i can i think i watched it um 40 45 times and i can still watch it more 45 times <laughs> right that Child- down memory lot of everything associated with the film favorite yeah. hollywood director um 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 
Tarantino. Mm-hmm. Now, because I just love the blood. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yes. Favorite, favorite um, Hollywood or uh, American British uh, actor or actress? Um, see, there, there are a lot of good, serious actors I can name. But I think I'll just name someone who is extremely good looking and not that an amazing actor because I think looks are also very important. Uh-huh. So I, I can give very serious names of black and white, you know, film actors whom I, whom I love watching. Um, uh, but I would say um, Sidney Poitier and also uh, George Clooney. <laughs> <laughs> Both very attractive men. <laughs> ah, I like it. And, and the range is like, you know, it's like the Himalayan range. So one is that side and the other yes, is this. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Uh, and uh, favorite book? Love in the Time of Cholera. Mm. Mm. Love in the Time of what? Cholera. Oh, okay. That one down. It's, and, it's, uh, 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 yeah. If you haven't read it, then please read it. Okay. I just wrote it down. Yeah. And oh. last one. Um, why are white foreign actors so bad in Indian <laughs> cinema? <laughs> uh, uh, Serious? Not this can't be a rapid fire. This is like. A- <laughs> it's so true. I've asked it to. I've asked it to everybody. Uh, I I th- I think I don't know. I I just feel they're they're always you know we just really really uh, do a lot of hard work and pick up the worst actors whom we show as uh, foreigners yep. in yeah. Indian film. They are bad to look at. Yep. They mm-hmm. try and speak Hindi. I don't know what why is the need for them to speak Hindi, which is just atrocious yep. and. Uh, they act bad. I mean, you know, just let it be. I mean, they can act bad. They can uh, say bad Hindi, but at least if they're good looking, <laughs> I know I, I'll be happy. <laughs> but I think from very such very very bad looking actors who speak in English and very half uh, half horribly bad half Hindi, and I don't know. I think we we, we really. The directors and producers are really talented people to find uh, find them. I don't know from where they find them, but it's 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 really bad. I'm yeah. unhappy all the time. <laughs> well, if you ever are in a film and they are casting a white actor and it's a terrible person, just know you know two white people <laughs> that uh, <laughs> will happily do it. <laughs> I, I, I will call you both and rant. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you so much for talking to us. It was lovely talking to you. Uh, you're, you're a joy to talk to. We will talk after I stop press record, but uh, we are very much looking forward to uh, watching anything you do, but especially uh, Sushant's last film. We're definitely going to be watching that. Uh, Rick? Thank yeah, you I for- just, I, I, I can't, I can't tell you sincerely. Um, you, you, when I saw you in Patalok, instantly you became for me one of the top actors american indian whatever anything you're doing i want to watch because in that film i saw oh my goodness this this woman is an actress and it's a wonderful thing to watch you act looking forward to the rest of what you're going to do in your career and when i make a an indian version of the bridges of madison county i want you to play the meryl streep role (laughs) i not so I'm not kidding. I would, I would put the film later, but the book, I think, you know, I I have the book mugged up in my head and mind. Also, the sequel of, of that book. Oh, my God. I mean, it's it's one of my most, most favorite, most favorite books that I have read. And the pain and that the pathos and that, you know, yes. they just, you know, not I think they're not they they're not. Mm, Becoming together makes makes the journey so special. Yes, yes. But 
Yes. I don't know. It just crosses my mind that they should have been together. I mean. Oh, come on. You know, of course they should have. Of course they should have. Yeah, I do. I want to set it in Calcutta. I am not kidding. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to this film. Uh, well, once again, thank you so much you. for talking to us. It was, it was lovely talking to you. Yes, thank you. Thank Thanks. you.